right. Since we are live, let's check it out. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Much love to the chat. Those of y'all that's in the building early. Smash the like button as you come on in. Smash the like button as you come on in. We're going to talk a little boxing in the AM. Share the video. Spread the word to the ends of the earth. 78 Sports TV is live. You dig? Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. Y'all come on in the building. Come on in here. What's happening to the chat, man? See y'all in here. Just waiting on everybody to get on in. I wasn't going to do my show today because I got some uh, work being done. I really need to be uh, supervising these guys. I got some work being done downstairs. So if y'all hear noise or banging around, that's what's happening. Oh, boy. I said, man, let me go ahead and try to do the show anyway. It just might be a little noisy. I think they got all the heavy, uh, hard-hitting stuff out the way, though. Had to get this floor, uh, getting a new floor put in. Had some water damage to a floor. Had like a uh, <coughs> a flood, <clears throat> like a flood or whatever. You know, um, in one of the rooms downstairs, water was leaking. So now the floor got to be taken up and rebuilt. Let me scroll up, see what we got in the building thus far. Uh, main event mark. Salute to the homie. Main event mark in the building. King Strick. Miami Snoopy 305 in the building. DJ Zion Love. Black Attack. Terrell Colwell. Uh, Jay Everything. Frank from the Land. Robert Singleton. Cool Breeze. TJ Boxing and Sports. Uh, EJ. We got uh, Stephen L. The Mac in the building. Uh, Hectic Nasty, Frequent Flyer RC, Antonio Alessino, um, Brother Stormy B Man in the building, Chesamane up in here, um, Jarrell, Salute, Black Swan, uh, Bo, uh, Bo Vice Boxing, the homie Bank Statement Kennels in the building, Larry Rankins. Michael Jordan. Let's see here. Kyle the Face Stiller. Pugilism and Politics. Dane Watson. Eugene Williams. Darlin James. Shermaine Calhoun in the building. Shogun 76. D Man Jr. Uh, let me see here. Vince Williams. <clears throat> Deacon Dallas. Underground Asylum in the building. Let's see here. It skipped on me. Wait a second here, y'all. Let's see. I was say Underground Asylum. <clears throat> okay, Stormy say, I got Hall of Notes. Uh, Blue Eyes Soul on Beats uh, with Sugar tonight. Okay. That's what it do. I ain't going to be able to make that one. I ain't going to be able to make it tonight, but I'm definitely going to be trying to tune in. Definitely going to try to tune in. Akondo Sami Hassan, what's happening with it? Al Green. Malik. <coughs> These fucking weirdos, man. I swear, bro. I don't understand people, bro. I just don't get it, man. I feel I really need to do something about this mental health. For real. The real uh, Barker, Mass Arms, JMJ, uh, two one two in the building. Uh, King W Boxing, Jay Gibbs, Harden Step Back. Let's see here. Craig L. Terrell Grace, Jay in the building. Came to win. Terry Wood, CB Sports TV. Let's see here. Joseph Brown, KO for Miles. Uh, Michael, let me see here. What's up, Jelly Bean? Salute to the homie Radio Time and the Super Chat showing love early. Much love and much appreciation, family. Say salute to the general in the chat. Smash the like button. Absolutely. We should easily have 160-some likes in here by now, but, you know, 
That's how I go. Hit the thumbs up, ladies and gents. Salute to everybody that's in the building. I see you here on Mega Red, Southpaw Boxing 77, BN Boxing News, uh, Mike, Mark Harrison, BBG, the homie Live Life Real, CT Fat Boy, Lovely Brown Sugar Tay Tay in the building, EJ McCory, Opulent LD, what's happening? What's happening? Uh, Mike from Mike's from the loose loop. Once again, y'all, for just joining us. Listen, man, I got some work being done in the uh, crib. Uh, so they putting in the taking out the old floor, putting in the new floor. So if y'all hear some banging or saw going on or something like that in the background, just bear with me, man. You see, they banging now. All right. Let's get, what's up, real deal detailing shop? What's happening with it? <clears throat> Hotep Shalom, salute. Trey Brown, what's happening? All right, look, y'all, let's go get to it. Jesus Christ. As soon as I really get into the show, now they're going hard. All right, so check it out. Uh, we saw after Tank Davis versus uh, Roly Romero fight, What's up, uh, Joe Townsend? Brother Joe Townsend always coming through, representing the Young Money and Magic. Y'all be on the lookout for the new link. Um, we had um, Tank Davis versus Rolly Romero, and you had Leonard Ellaby talking about Eddie Hearn. Now, we know Eddie Hearn and Leonard don't get along. Um, they always making threats to each other, clowning each other, that kind of shit. It's been going on for a few years now. But uh, Leonard said something like, man, I really don't like Eddie Hearn. He was doing the interview. He said, I really don't like Eddie Hearn. Um, that's the one guy. He said, I try to keep it professional. You know what I'm saying? But it's only it's one guy I wish I could stomp out. I wish I could stomp him out. You know what I'm saying? And um, so he said he want to stomp out Eddie Hearn. You know what I'm saying? If he could get away with it, he'll stomp him out. I'd pay to see that. You're talking about pay-per-view. Shit, I'd pay that. I paid $200 to watch them two motherfuckers go at it. You know what I'm saying? Eddie Hearn responds to that, right? He does an interview. Somebody asked him, <clears throat> uh, my apologies, for, I can't remember if it was IFL TV or uh, Boxing Social or one of those channels. Um, he did an interview with and somebody asked him, so Eddie, what do you, what do you have to say to, you know, Leonard Ellaby saying that he'll stomp you out? So Eddie says he's surprised that Showtime allowed uh, him to talk about Eddie Hearn for for seven minutes. It says free promo for him. And then he starts singing a song, Ain't No Sunshine When Tank's Gone, Only Darkness, right? And then he say, you know, he just he sang, he sang the song, basically. I'm not going to sing it. But he sang the song. Shit was funny. <clears throat> but... Leonard, uh, uh, Eddie is so fucking arrogant, man. This dude says, well, yeah, that song's going to get millions of views, you know. That song's going to get millions of views. He is, he's such a self-promoter, man. He does little to prom actually promote his fighters. But one thing Eddie Hearn is brilliant at is promoting himself. Absolutely brilliant at promoting himself. You know what I'm saying? He's turned himself into a celebrity off the backs of uh, fighters. You know what I'm saying? He's always he, he, Eddie Hearn will never turn down an interview. You know, anybody get an interview with Eddie Hearn, just run up to him with the camera, and he going to turn it on for you. You know what I'm saying? Corey McGrowan in the Super Chat, much love, much appreciation, fam. He says, man, somebody in your house doing the nasty. <laughs> nah, man. That's just that uh, the workers down there, they, they've been virtually quiet this whole time. And I was debating on whether I was going to do my show. I'm like, man, should I even do my show today? I'm like, I don't know. I missed it yesterday. Shit, go ahead and do it. And then as soon as I fire this mug up, here you go. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, yeah, yeah, Mega Ray, he loved the spotlight. That's what he loved. You know what I'm saying? He loved it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Eddie Hearn, I don't know exactly what, because Leonard Ellaby said, they asked him, what is it about Eddie Hearn to get under your skin? He said, he know. He know what time it is. I'm not going to say it. I don't want to go into that. It happened some years ago. 
I don't want to go into that, rehash that, but he know. Now, I don't know what Leonard is talking about, but I do know Eddie Hearn put the royal fuck to uh, the PBC and Showtime on, on several occasions. When Eddie Hearn, uh, well, when Al Heyman was trying to make a mark in the UK, he was interested in putting on some fights in the UK, and Eddie Hearn was interested in putting on some fights in America. They linked up to work together, figuring they can both help each other out, okay? And Eddie Hearn pretty much fucked the PBC. You know what I'm saying? He, um, um, Eddie Hearn <clears throat> was allowed to, you know, put, you know, Kell Brook and, and, and Sean Porter fought. Kell Brook beat Sean Porter in a controversial fight. Some people think Kell Brook won easy. Some people think Kell Brook was holding all fucking day long in the fight, which he was. Um, Sean Porter lost his titles to Kell Brook, Eddie Hearn's fighter, and Sean Porter didn't have any rematch clause in the contract, which is odd to me. Okay, it's odd that he had no rematch clause and couldn't get a, a shot back at Sean Porter. All right, uh, back at Kell Brook, I should say. Also, when the PBC had Charles Martin and Deontay Wilder and had an opportunity to make a unification bout <clears throat> uh, for the heavyweight titles on uh, the uh, PBC platforms, they went to Eddie Hearn and because, like I said, they're trying to build this relationship with Eddie. They went to Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn put Charles, uh, put, put Anthony Joshua in with Charles Martin and we know that the rest is history. Anthony Joshua beats Charles Martin and start acting like a fucking diva. Right? Now that could have all been Deontay Wilder's glory. But the PBC fucked up trying to politic with Eddie Hearn. So after he uses PBC and Showtime to help build Anthony Joshua, remember Joshua used to be on Showtime. Um, and after that, he they, they abandoned ship. They left Showtime, okay, and went over to um, the zone, okay, and Sky Sports, whatever the fuck. He just he, he left and he fucked Sky Sports too. But you know, that's what Eddie Hearn does. Right, so then when we, you're trying to make Wilder versus Joshua fight, and it's all this bullshit about oh Wilder has to sign with the Zone, oh well does, can the Zone and, and Showtime work together and all this dumb shit when they were both just on Showtime. See what I'm saying? People will always leave that part of the story whenever they're talking about the Wilder versus Joshua saga, how Eddie Hearn made it difficult to make that fight, uh, and, and, and he ducked the situation. You know what I'm saying? Trey Brown in the Super Chat. Appreciate the love, fam. He says, congrats on your success of the latest dog episode. Oh, yeah. Salute, fam. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Um, Game Dog Talks is, is flying, man. They're taking off. People from all over the world watch them shows. Not a lot of them are. Most of them not subscribed because they not, you know, they don't want to be subbed and listen to a, <clears throat> a bunch of boxing and shit like that all week and then wait for the dog show. A lot of them are subbed. <clears throat> but, you know, it's all good. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're gonna um we're gonna do a uh you know, probably a episode of Game Dog Talk. Like not not an episode, but we got some stuff we gotta address, you know what I'm saying, to these some of these haters and shit. It's a lot of little haters floating around out there. Like I be telling y'all, bro, like whenever black folks try to do some shit, man, you got all these rules and stipulations from from nothing as shade tree niggas, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So motherfuckers is like, oh, they snitching. They on there snitching. They snitching on the game, man. They snitching. Meanwhile, like I told you, Richard Stratton can write 120 books on the pit bulls, and interview all the dog men in the books, got their pictures up there, the famous dogs, and telling all these stories and shit of how the game used to be and what they doing currently and all kind of shit. Everybody look at that as legendary masterpieces and shit. You know what I'm saying? But when I come on here, and interview motherfuckers. Now, all of a sudden, it's, oh, man, these guys on there snitching, man. They fucking up the game, man. And shut the fuck up, bro. <clears throat> fuck up out of here. Same niggas be all over these goddamn message boards and shit. Little game dog message boards. Title telling on they fucking self. But anyway, let's keep it boxing. We're going to talk about that shit later. <clears throat> Smash the like button, y'all. We should have 400 likes in the building.
get them likes up. 400. What's up, Kevin Hill? But anyway, so yeah, Eddie Hearn pretty much put the fuck, he put the royal fuck to uh, the PBC <clears throat> in Showtime. Now, I'm sure he's done other things. I don't know exactly what Leonard Ellaby and Eddie Hearn beef is, but I know that part. I know that much. I know that's that's why whenever Eddie Hearn tries to put on a show in America, PBC always tries to block it and uh, make it difficult for him by buying up the venues and shit like that and uh, making f- fake calling in favors. No, don't give him that venue. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Putting their cards on on the same dates. Shit like that. Trying to trying to fuck his shit up. <clears throat> and, and rightfully so. Eddie Hearn is a snake. He's a snake. And when you do snaky shit like that, that follow you. You know what I'm saying? When you do suck ass shit like that, it follows you. BT1 in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation, fam. Says seeing Wilder so happy is the biggest win for me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm trying to tell people that, bro. Like That's why I say this is my favorite Deontay Wilder interview because the rest of the world got to see what I see and what I hear when I talk to Deontay Wilder. Um, he's always upbeat in a good mood and always doing, <clears throat> doing positive shit. You know what I'm saying? So how people couldn't don't, don't like this man or hate on him is beyond my understanding, bro. It's just beyond me. It's just these dudes is weirdos. You know what I'm saying? But for just enjoy anything that inspires us, some people want to destroy. It, you know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Anything that's, that's meant to inspire us or makes us happy or proud, you have people, you got racist motherfuckers who want to knock that smile off our face. And unfortunately, you got black people that's just jigaboo sellouts. They do the same thing. They want to knock that smile off your face. You know, and it don't matter what it is. Whatever I told y'all this before. When the movie Black Panther came out, the Marvel comic movie, when that came out, you had you saw people all over the world excited about it. You know what I'm saying? People who was familiar with the comic. Some people just was excited to see a black superhero and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, based out of Africa and stuff, you know, people was excited, and you had motherfuckers running around here, oh, Wakanda's not real, what are you so happy for? You're not really smart, Wakanda's not a real place, you know, then you had uh, dumbass black people who are supposed to be conscious, you had they stupid asses running around talking about, um, oh man, that, that, that movie's racist, man, and um, they putting spears and plates, plates in people's lips and all this old shit. Like, dude, shut the fuck up, man. Motherfuckers so ashamed of being black is disgusting, bro. Motherfuckers just ashamed of their own fucking culture and shit, bro. Motherfuckers afraid of a spear and shit. Like that make you look some type of way, you dumbass motherfucker. One up films in the super chat. Much love, much appreciation. Family says, breaking news. Uh Michelle Joy Phelps joins OnlyFans. Wow, that don't surprise me. If that's true, it don't surprise me at all. Um, young uh, Bar- Breakersfield in the Super Chat, appreciate the love. Says, smash the like button. Yes, indeed. Get the likes all the way up, y'all. We should have 450, 500 likes up in this joint. What's up, uh, Oak Park Box? I see you in the building, homie. DJ Zion Love, salute to the homie in the super chat. Much love, much appreciation. He says, peace and salute, 78. I just booked my flight for the meet and greet in Texas, and I, I will bring my laptop uh, with Caribbean music and more. Salute, homie. That's what it do. Yeah, I'll see you down there. Yes, indeed. Said go check her Twitter. Oh, bro, I'm not interested in seeing that chick. On, I, I've already seen everything I need to see from that chick. Trust me. Best be believing. That's why I said I'm not surprised if she's on OnlyFans. That's that's everybody who knows something already knows something. You know what I'm saying? That there ain't nothing to be even excited about. Yeah, no. <clears throat> Yeah, but anyway, yeah, so Eddie Hearn put the royal fuck to 
Leonard Ella be now in uh, uh you know Mayweather promotions Al Heyman PBC and and and, and Fox I mean in Showtime I should say and then that's why they're making it difficult for him but I don't know what the actual beef is if something else happened I don't know if if uh, Eddie tried to poach Tank from them or something like that I know he was trying to poach the Charlos and and I know he was trying to poach um uh, um Adrian Bronner he was trying to do a lot of illegal shit and got away with it you know what I'm saying <clears throat> Al Cummings said, am I going to stream the meet and greet? Uh, I'm going to record some video footage. I don't know about streaming it live. I think I'm going to re record some video footage and then put it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to record some video footage and put it up. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, Oak Park Boxing, tampering. That's what he was doing, tampering and shit. What's up, the village brother? What's happening with it? What's up, King Corleone? Godson77. Uh, Godson says, 78, did you have Roly winning up until the tank sent him to uh, the underworld? No, I didn't. I didn't have Roly winning. <clears throat> I didn't have Roly winning. I have I gave Roly one round. I forgot what round it was, but I gave him one round because I thought he was, even though he wasn't landing nothing clean, he was swinging and uh, Tank wasn't throwing enough punches. But uh, other than that, Roly wasn't winning that fight. Not in my opinion, he wasn't. He just he just surprised people. Uh, people are, what people were just giving Roly all this extra credit and shit because of the narrative that Roly he can't fight, he a bum and blah blah blah. And all this type of shit. So then he finds himself in the sixth round with Tank. People just feel like, oh, he's doing pretty good. Hey, man, he made it past the first round. He made it past the second round. Oh, Tank didn't knock him out. <clears throat> so that's just how people do. Once the narrative get created by a person, that's why I always tell y'all, man, when, 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 when a fighter you like is fighting somebody, don't you don't do your fighter no justice by calling some dude a bum and he trash and Man, we finna beat the fuck out of dude. Do garbage. He trash. Man, he ain't nothing, man. Man, do garbage. Because all you're doing is you diminishing the win when he do beat him. And then what you're also doing is creating a narrative that this guy suck. So anything he does that's good, if he win one or two rounds, people going to hype that shit up and make it seem like he, does, he did more than he actually did. Uh, JMJ2121, he said, uh, 78 didn't Eddie Hearn try to get wilder too? Yeah, he did. And he heard trying to poach a lot of uh, guys from the PBC. When he first got all that money from uh, the zone, yeah, he tried to he tried to poach a lot of guys from the PBC. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> he was throwing around a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Some guys went over there uh, because the PBC problem was at that time they couldn't guarantee dudes dates. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't tell guys when they was gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? And how many fights they was gonna get per year. PBC have just had some deals and they, they didn't know, you know, exactly when they was gonna be able to fight. So a lot of some guys just say, hey man, you know, hey Al, look, uh Eddie Hearn offered me, you know, three million dollars a fight, no matter who I fight. You know what I'm saying? Can you match that? And Al like, you know, you know, and then on top of that, Eddie Hearn like, okay, I'm gonna get you two fights a year, three fights a year guaranteed at three million dollars a fight. So that's nine million dollars guaranteed per year. So they go to Al Heyman with it, like, hey, hey Al, can you can you match this? And he like, hey man, no, nah, I can't. Eddie Hearn overpricing, uh, he over overspending right now because he's trying to poach y'all from me. He said, but if you if you're loyal to me, you'll make it up later. You know what I'm saying? But I can't um I can't fuck with them numbers right now. You know what I'm saying? So some guys left and um went over there to the zone over at match room, and uh, some guys stayed, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'll tell you one thing, though. Um, uh, what's the boy name? It, uh, Adrian Broner, he 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 did some dumb shit when he turned down that Jay-Z deal. But Jay-Z and them offered him, like, I can't remember how much money. Was it 60-something million? 60-something million or something or 70 million for like, for, like, six fights. So he'd be making, like, 10 million guaranteed per fight and shit. You know what I'm saying? Hold 
Come on one second, yeah. That's my boy Marty. <clears throat> you know, he was making like uh, was it forty million? So it was forty million? Okay. I thought it was sixty. Well, whatever. I forgot what it was, but we broke it down that he was gonna make be making a lot of money. But he turned it down saying that, you know, uh fuck Jay Z, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, give me a hundred million, give me a hundred million, all kind of shit. He was just talking real crazy and shit. Just yeah, just horrible, man. Stupid. You know what I'm saying? That was just a, a dumb thing to say and do. He could have been a star of Rock Nation. Now I understand I understand his loyalty to Al. That's a good thing. Loyalty is always a good thing. Um but then Adrian Brunner run around, <clears throat> you know, he talking about, you know, he unhappy because he ain't getting no fights and stuff, man. Come on, bro. Like, it's a lot of stuff that Adrian Brunner that we don't know publicly that Adrian Brunner, like, Al Heyman do a lot of shit for a lot of these dudes, bro. I'm just going to tell you the real. You know, people ain't saying this shit because, you know, motherfuckers got agendas. You know what I'm saying? They be mad at Al Heyman about this and that and all kind of dumb fag shit. But regardless, Al Heyman have done a lot of shit for a lot of these fighters. I know this for a fact. <clears throat> you know, it's fighters that, you know, I'm just going to say it like this. <clears throat> it's fighters that got into domestic disputes. You know what I'm saying? That then, you know, slap fire at their girl and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Having a bad day type shit. <clears throat> motherfucker get arrested. You know what I'm saying? Al Heyman get called. Motherfucker get out of jail. And the media never touches the story. Like, like that's power. That's power. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker never even heard about it. You know what I'm saying? Never even heard about this shit happening. You know what I'm saying? Because it could ruin the fighter's career and the way you have to market them and shit. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers and spent their money up and got in debt and had to call Al Heyman and Al Heyman and gave these motherfuckers advances and shit. You know what I'm saying? $500,000 advances and shit. And then when it comes time for them to fight and pay him back, they like, oh man, I need some more money. I need some more money. And just dumb shit. See, they don't, they don't tell you about that kind of shit out here and be doing. Isaiah Jones in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation, fam. Salute to you. Says salute, 78. Salute to you, homie. Appreciate the love. Corey McGroin in the super chat. Much love, much appreciation. Says, who was Dev before the zone? <clears throat> um... What you mean, who was Dev before the zone? He was Devin Haney. What you mean? You, you said who was he with before the zone? I think that's a good I think Devin was with uh uh PBC. I know he I know Mayweather Promotions wanted him to sign with them, but he didn't sign with Mayweather Promotions. Um Dev was with uh PBC. And uh PBC couldn't they, they basically couldn't match the money that uh, Eddie Hearn was, was paying. You know what I'm saying? You know, so basically he had to do what he had to do for that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? So now he's going to fight for Undisputed. You know, he's going to fight for Undisputed. And, um, you know, Wish him nothing but the best. It's imperative that Devin win this fight. He got to beat Cambosis, man. Got to just for the sake of boxing. He got to win, man. Because if he don't, I fear what's going to happen with boxing if Devin Haney don't win this fight, man. Because all everything he gave up, the courage and shit he's showing, the, the testicular fortitude that he's showing to go over there against all odds and, 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 and fight. In another man country, when you know this dude is taking you through the ringer, making everything difficult for you, because he don't want to fight. Devin Haney going over there anyway, okay? But like I said yesterday, <clears throat> if Devin somehow don't win this fight or they rob him or something, ain't nobody finna um these other fighters, man. We don't stand a chance trying to encourage these fighters to fight the best fights. And nah, man, they're gonna do what's best for them financially, bro. They're gonna do what's best for them financially. See what I'm saying? See, Devin Haney early on made a financial decision when he went over to uh, Matt, Eddie Hearn. Now. That was a financial decision for the most part. He got paid, you know what I'm saying, more than all the other dudes. He got paid. Now 
since he got paid, he got the money. He like, hey, let me make these legacy moves. You see what I'm saying? So he, I want him to be successful in achieving that shit. What's up, Mr. Sheldon? General Africa in the super chat. What to do, fam? He says scambosis uh, sound real uh, manic and delusional. Strange. Yeah, he, he's a weirdo, bro. <clears throat> he's a weirdo. It's a lot of weirdos running around out here. <clears throat> a lot. Of, it's a lot of people right here on YouTube on the verge of mental collapse and breakdown. You'll see. I ain't got to say nothing. Just you just sit back and you'll see it. Just don't be writing me. Ask me what the fuck going on. I don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Who y'all holding my blaze? Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of that weird shit going on, bro. Um, you know, Scambosis is he just he, he think he's somebody else, bro. He think he's somebody else. He, he started to believe this character that he's created, and that's the dangerous part. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's best to just be yourself, man, at all times. You know, I remember when I first came to the Boston community, <clears throat> I tried to be like a professional reporter type of dude, like the first year or two. You know what I'm saying? I, was, I mean, I still talk my shit, but I was trying to, I thought I had to, like, you know, talk a certain way and uh, really, you know, do this and do that to because I'm talking boxing, you know, and and uh, I got tired of doing that shit, bro. After I'm like, man, why the fuck am I doing that? Matter of fact, I think what what changed was I think uh, one of my homeboys was watching my video, and um, he said, man, why are you talking like that? I said, talking like what? He said, like that, nigga. Why are you talking like that? And I said, damn, I didn't even notice I was doing that shit, bro. Like, why am I doing that shit? So I stopped. That was years ago. But I used to always try to talk like a reporter and shit when I did my videos. You know what I'm saying? And then I got more comfortable. Like, man, I just be my fucking self. Fuck that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people, I think what happens is a lot of people, um, when they come online and stuff like that, where they get any type of attention, they try to be somebody else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Frank from the last in 78 was on his Brian Custer, right? Exactly. I was on that Brian Custer type time. No disrespect to Brian Custer. I like Brian Custer. But yeah, that's what like I was trying to be real clean and neat with my boxing talk. You know what I'm saying? Let me see here. John Kirby say, I think fighters are afraid to leave Al Heyman. Floyd, Floyd's the one that didn't show up. Uh Hold on, let me click on this. He said, Floyd's the one that didn't show up to the press conference or the fight, but we're keeping it professional, right? Huh? What are you talking about? I don't know. I must have missed something else you said. I don't know what you're talking about, family. <laughs> Ancestor Ray said, reporting live from Milwaukee. It's 78 Sports TV. How's it going, guys? <clears throat> D must have said 78 with Brian Gumbel. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know why I thought, like, if I'm talking sports, I had to talk a certain way and, like, you know, present myself as, like, clean image. I'm like, man, fuck that shit, bro. I don't give a fuck about that shit. I'm going to talk how I want to talk. Yeah. No, uh, what's up, Southside? No, I got some work being done in the crib, Southside. For all of y'all who just now joined us, I got a, a crew of workers downstairs putting in a new floor. So they taking out the old floor, and uh, I got some water damage. It was like a flood and shit. So, uh, yeah, man, it was all bad. Motherfucking pipe bursted and shit, man. You know the motherfucking uh, little pipe thing behind the sink and shit that connect the water to the sink. That that motherfucker came loose, man. It was spraying, bro. It was spraying like fucking goddamn waterfall, dude. It was ridiculous. All over the fucking bathroom, on the walls and shit. Like, what the fuck? I had to turn off the main power line. I had to go in the basement, turn off the, not power, but the uh, water line. I had to turn that shit off. And then 
soak all that shit up. And I'm thinking it's good. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, okay, it's good. We can clean it up. You get the little wet vac and clean the carpet in the hallway and shit. You're thinking you got everything good. But as it started to dry, the fucking floorboard started buckling and shit, moving. I'm like, fuck this shit. So I had to call these motherfuckers. Punk ass homeowners insurance didn't even cover this shit. Because he's talking about I waited too long to call them. Talking about I was supposed to call them right when it happened. I'm like, motherfucker, I thought I got it fixed. I mopped up the fucking water. Oh, sorry, we're going to have to deny your claim. So, you know, I got to pay for this dumb shit. My brother Joe Townsend in the Super Chat showing love. What it do, Joe? He says, uh, let me find out 78. Your original name was Radio Ra. <laughs> Reporting live from Milwaukee. Your mill is your mill, as they say. Yeah. No, nah, man. I wasn't doing that kind of shit. I was still myself. I was just, you know, talking like I was in a job interview or some shit. <clears throat> I don't know. It's just a scam likely. I'm not answering this. What's up, my brother Junior? The truth in the building. What to do, Junior? <clears throat> yeah, the homeowners insurance fucked me, bro. You know what I'm saying? But the uh, you know, that's how they is though, bro. They cover they ain't gonna cover the cause of, of the situation, but they cover the damage. But they tell me since I waited a month before calling them. And that they can't cover it. I'm like, man, fuck you, motherfucker, bro. I swear, man. I swear. Man, I was mad as fuck, bro. Mad as fuck. I want to just... Man, I see why people be losing it. I see why people, motherfuckers be, like, doing crazy wild shit. Some motherfucker can't take that shit, bro. Luckily, I had some money. Because I could see a motherfucker, if you ain't got no bread like that and shit, and you just... You trying to do the best you can do, and then some shit like that pop up. And the motherfucker ain't coming. You're like, what the fuck I'm paying y'all every month for? Motherfucker lose their mind. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker lose their mind, bro. That's why I always try to keep me some bread, man, for a rainy day. And right now, it's raining like a motherfucker for me. Shit, I got to do this shit. I got to get my car. I, I just spent $10,000 on a new fucking engine on my Escalade. Then the check engine light come on uh, for some old technical stupid shit. Some more computerized shit. So now I gotta get this that motherfucker in the shop right now. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. That's what happens. Ty French 600 in the super chat. What it do, fam? Much love, much appreciation. Says you're good, 78. That sound like the sound that uh, Cam Booty will make when his uh, body hit the uh, canvas after Dev knock him out Saturday. <laughs> Black excellent. Salute, salute. Yes, indeed. Oh, my boy Marty McFly in the cash app. Salute. Marty say uh, for Devin, it was a good job going with Joel, Judah and shit. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Joel know what he's doing. Yeah, Devin be fine. You know, I'm not worried about Devin Haney. I'm worried about them punk-ass judges and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, one second. Text my brother happy birthday. Yes, indeed. All right. Yeah, the ref. Yeah, man, it's going to be some shenanigans, bro. It's going to be some shenanigans over there. We already know this. It's going to be some shenanigans over there in in uh, Australia. But Dev is confident. He ready to go. He locked and loaded. He locked in. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident Dev going over there and uh, put down a demo. I am true, man. I said my engine went out, but I had a warranty. Yeah, I had a, I had a warranty uh, on mine as well, but uh, 
they only covered uh what thirty five hundred dollars worth of it and shit. They only covered thirty five hundred dollars worth of uh that. I, I needed a. Re- that's cool when you need some shit work done to your engine, but when you gotta replace the whole fucking engine, you know what I'm saying? That motherfucker gonna run you ten. So now, I got a warranty of a uh, five year warranty on the new engine. Um. So. <clears throat> that should be all right, but yeah, all that computer shit, man. They need to just go back to making cars the way they used to make them motherfuckers before all these goddamn computers and fucking chips and goddamn all these sensors and shit. That shit always fuck up, bro. Check tire pressure sensor and all this dumbass shit. Like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? You check it, you put air in your tires, ain't nothing wrong with the fucking air. Motherfucking light just coming on and shit. Take these to the shop. Oh, we don't know. We're going to have to run the diagnostics on it and see what the problem is. Uh, I've got to charge about 250 for that, and uh, we'll let you know, Kevin. Let you know what the problem is here. Okay, it looks like there's a uh, fuse blown here. That's only about $15 fuse there. Oh, you, you going to charge me 250 to tell me that to, for $15 fuse? Yeah, unfortunately, the labor, the labor... You know, us figuring out what the problem was, so we gotta have to charge you two fifty. Fucking bullshit, man. Joe Townsend in the super chat. What it do, Joe? He said you should uh have came to Townsend Automotive seventy eight, and we would have uh got you together, but instead you hating on hating on fly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a good idea, though. I wonder how much it costs. See, it'd probably be about 600 It'd probably be about 600 I wonder how much it costs. Hey, Joe, do y'all work on foreign cars, like BMWs and shit? Because if y'all work on foreign cars, I have I, uh, I have my um my BMW uh taken over there and shit. I, I swear I would. I, I had that motherfucker drove cross-country to Townsend Automotive, get that motherfucker fixed, come back, do a video, Hell yeah, do a little commercial for y'all and shit. I do that shit. I got the BMW sitting in the uh, driveway. I don't even be driving that motherfucker no more. You know what I'm saying? Once I got that Escalade, that BMW is, is, is fucking child's play, bro. That motherfucker. I mean, it's cool and shit, but it, it's so low to the ground and shit. It's still a classic. But that motherfucker is so low to the motherfucking ground and shit, man. I be feeling like I'm getting a car accident. When you, when you get used to driving that big-ass... Uh, Escalate sitting up high and shit. You feel like a, a lord of the road and shit. Like you, like you on a motherfucking horse or some shit. Sitting in that damn little ass car. You be like, every time you at a a, a, a light a intersection, you can't see behind the other car. You like, you scooting out there like, oh, please don't die. Please don't come flying out here and hit me. Shit. Let me see here. Corey McGrown in the super chat. Much love, much appreciation, fam. He says, damn, you spent a lot of money. Take that, take this five on the sandwich. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. See? Brother Corey McGrown looking out. Appreciate the love. Uh uh, Joe, you say y'all okay, you say your brother got a 740. So yeah, okay. I might do that, man. I'm gonna call you. And um I might do that, motherfucker. Once I get done with all this other dumb shit. Yeah, I might I might send that motherfucker your way. These motherfuckers out here is uh full of shit. I got one dude, some little fucking redneck dude. He cold with them cars though. He cold. Like he he know how to fi- he'll fix your shit, but he gonna tax you. This motherfucker will penalize you if you got a foreign car. You know, he will he a patriot and shit. I brought my BMW to him one time, and um so he looked at it, he says, Oh, uh, yeah. He said, Yeah, it's pretty good shape. Pretty good shape for his for his age. He says, all right, I'm going to have to run uh, two different diagnostics on it because it's a BMW. Woo, woo. I'm like, two different diagnostics? He's like, yeah, I got to run that on there. And woo, woo. He's like, yeah, so, you know, you need to really get a, an American-made car. That's what you should do, get an American-made car. He just kept talking down on the BMW. And what the fuck are you talking about? You supposed to be fixing the car. What are you talking about? This motherfucker penalized me and shit for having BMW and shit. So I don't like working on BMWs and Mercedes and 
Toyotas. I like working on GM products. Okay. It's made in America. After this and that, and, you know, he'd be listening to Rush Limbaugh and all that kind of shit back in the day. And he one of them guys. But he'll fix your shit, though. Yeah, I'm going to hit you up, though, Joe. <clears throat> Get that motherfucker back in good shape. Get that BMW. Uh, little, it's some computer shit wrong with that BMW. It's like some weird-ass computer shit going on. I parked that motherfucker when I got my uh, Escalade. And I, I ain't really fuck with it, but I'm going uh, to get it back up and running. And then I'm probably going to um, probably gonna give it to my son and shit. EJ McCory in the cash app. Much love, much appreciation. He said, fuck you two. Them hoes get no cut. Much love, brother. Appreciate the love. Yeah. Yeah, you two be on that fuck shit sometime. <laughs> uh, Stormy said, was he wearing a MAGA hat? No, nah, he had no MAGA hat on, but he was one of them people, though. Most definitely one of them people. Said, might as well trade an Escalade for a what? A cyber truck. What the hell is a cyber truck? No, I ain't getting rid of Escalade. I love that motherfucker. That's my baby right there. That's my big girl, Sophia. That's what I call her. Big Sophia. <clears throat> Let me see here. Yeah, but anyway, can y'all still hear that work in the background? Is it loud or is it just, is it irritating or is it just, you know, whatever? Mow your sauce box. Mow your sauce. What's happening with it, fam? I see you in the building. Let me let me type in this cyber truck y'all talking about. Let me look and see what this is. Cyber truck. <clears throat> let me see. The Tesla shit. Man, hell no. That shit ugly the motherfucker. That shit look disgusting. It look like some shit off a video game. Fuck that ugly ass car. Yeah, I'd be embarrassed to drive that shit. Why do you gotta make it so ugly? That look like some Lego shit. It's like one of them Lego cars or some shit. Is this the yeah, hell? I ain't riding that shit. Unless that motherfucker is. Powered by the sun or some shit, like the like like a solar power car or something. That's the only way I get that motherfucker. You ain't got to put no gas in. Let's see. <clears throat> you said Tesla's ride smooth though. Yeah, Tesla's. I mean, they cool and shit. I just they gotta make the motherfucker with some more style for me, man. I don't. I don't. I like to ride in style. I don't like that. Uh. Weird ass. I mean, I, I understand the economic, you know, like, you know, the fact that it's, you know, energy efficient and all that kind of, I get that part, but them shits be ugly, though. They got, once they, once they build one of them motherfuckers that look like a Cadillac or something, you know what I mean, with some style to it, then I, I this, I look into it then. <laughs> Julia say, you cyber truck niggas still playing with, uh, with Legos. Yeah, yeah, they play with Legos. I don't know what the hell that is. That's like some shit off Tetris or some shit. That shit look horrible. Yeah, I want to... Uh, it's, it's what that car called. Uh, I saw they had made this one Cadillac, man. It was it was a big, long motherfucker, man. Beautiful-ass car. I can't remember. Let me see. Let me see if I can get the name of that Cadillac. It never came out, though. Let me see here. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh yeah, 2018. What the fuck? I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Seal? C I E L. <clears throat> it's a convertible Cadillac. And they never released the motherfucker. Not to the public like that. Cause I'm gonna get one of them motherfuckers. That motherfucker was beautiful. Hold on one second. Yeah, they, I seen when the model came out. But I don't know what the fuck. If I don't know if it was just they made that shit for private pe- private stock for people or what the fuck. But that motherfucker is coming down, bro. That motherfucker hard. That motherfucker hard as a bitch right there. Yeah, if I can get one of them joints, <laughs> man, every summer going to be a beautiful summer. Because I only drive that motherfucker in the summertime. So you're looking at the TRX. Let me, uh, let me type it in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I seen these. Yeah, I seen these. Yeah, them nice. <clears throat> uh, Mike Hughes say, I paid off 5.0 last November. I'm done buying cars. I ain't mad at you, homie. I ain't mad at you. I still want one of them, uh, one of them uh, Corvettes, them 2020 Corvettes. I want one of them joints. I'm going to wait until the price drop on them. I'm going to buy a used one and shit. I'm going to wait till somebody put like 30,000 miles on these shit. Then I'm going to go buy that motherfucker. 40,000 miles or something. That's what I'm going to do. Damn sure I ain't buying the new off the lot. What's up, Slip the Jab? You say uh, Lexus uh, LX570. Let me look at it. Let's see. Oh yeah, that motherfucker nice. But I don't, you know, it's nice, man. But it's, it it give me that Jeep vibe. It give me too much of that Jeep vibe and shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's nice though. I think this. Yeah, my uncle got one of these joints. No, 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 he don't. Is it? Do we got one of these or? No, my uncle got a, his his joint is a Benz truck. <clears throat> it's a Benz truck, but um, uh, it's nice, man. It's just you know. Yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little different. Kevin Hill said you fuck with them Lincolns. Yeah, I used to have a Navigator back in the day, back when they first came out. What's up, Drew Titan in the building? What it do, Drew? Yeah, I used to have a Navi back in the day. But I, uh, the air suspension, the suspension shit went out on it and shit. That motherfucker driving real low and shit. And, um, it cost me an arm and leg to get that shit fixed. Said three year old cost three year old car costs more than it did three years ago. Oh yeah, most definitely the the prices of them cars and shit going up like crazy now, man. Yeah, them, them cars prices going up stupid. You said, do I fuck with the Audi? I like Audis. They're nice. Yeah, I seen some clean ass Audis. I just seen some real clean ones. Motherfuckers take care of them joints. Motherfuckers are nice. To the Dodge Ram, the uh, TRX. Let me look at that. I don't think I don't think I seen that one. Let me look that up. <clears throat> oh yeah, I seen this. My, my partner Tone got one of these. Yeah, my partner Tone got one of these. 
Yeah, he be going fishing in that motherfucker. Yeah, my, my nigga got that. Uh, my brother Joe Townsend back in that super chat showing love. Appreciate the support, homie. Says you got damn right. I still play with Legos. He said right after I fuck, uh, I fuck, fuck little John, uh, John Mama. I build all type of shit <laughs> and eat the fruit snacks. Hell yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Hey, you know what I just got put on yesterday? That's good as a motherfucker, bro. Shit called uh, fruit gushers. I know y'all probably laughing and shit. Like, man, you late. But yeah, I just got put on these fruit gushers, the flavor mixers and shit. Man, this shit fire, bro. I, I ate a whole pack of them shits yesterday. I, I, I had like three of them and, um, and been into them shits. I said, like, oh, hell no. You finna get it. The whole bag. You finna get it. <laughs> Chris Jordan said, you late as hell. So, man, yeah, I know. I don't really be eating all that candy and shit like that, bro. But, uh, you know, I fuck with fruit snacks, though. I fuck with fruit snacks heavy. Fruit snacks is like the best shit ever, man. Fruit snacks and um, uh, my favorite thing to eat was dots back in the day. In the 80s and 90s, dots and shit. But, you know, I can't fuck with them motherfuckers no more. Dots ruined my life. Dots, dots took all my chewing teeth and said, be gone. Let me see. Somebody said I missed a uh, super chat. Let me see. I'm trying to see. <clears throat> Tom Etheridge uh, in the super chat. Much love and much appreciation. Says, hey, 78, I tried Firehouse Subs on your recommendation. Wasn't feeling the corned beef and the pastrami. Uh, where did I go wrong? Uh, Firehouse Subs is decent, bro, if you get the right shit. I mean, it depends on what you like. Like, some restaurants got a good-ass steak, uh, steak and cheese sandwich, but they might suck at the other shit. Some places got a weak-ass steak and cheese, but they got good cold subs. Like, they got bad hot subs and good cold subs or vice versa. But um, Firehouse Subs, I, I fuck with the chicken. I get the grilled chicken with provolone cheese and... um. The hot sub, grilled chicken, provolone cheese, uh, caramelized onions and shit like that, mayo. I get that. That's what I fuck with from them. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes I get the, the little hot turkey sandwich they got. <clears throat> but I ain't never tried. I heard they, they got good uh, meatball sub. I never tried it, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, my go-to spot for subs is Cousin Subs in Milwaukee. Cousin Subs got the best sub, period. Hot sub, cold sub, the best shit is, is Cousin Subs in Milwaukee. You know what I mean? Yep. If you like, if you like, a, I get the turkey, turkey joint from um, Cousin Subs, add provolone cheese to it, you good. You know what I mean? Or if you want a uh, cheese steak, get that shit. You know what I'm saying? Add mayo, you good. Unless you want the the Philly cheese take uh, type of vibe where they just put the cheese in the meat and shit. You know what I'm saying? Michael uh, Gigi says Michael Benson reporting Tank Davis is still under contract. They're sending matrim legal letters to stop uh, talking about him. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, that don't surprise me. If that's true, that don't surprise me. These fighters just be doing shit, man, lashing out, making up shit, and act like Tank, acting like he gonna leave. Maybe with the promotions, he's so unhappy and shit. And where you at now? Hold on one second, y'all. All right. He says, I should have got the brisket. Now, I fuck with brisket, just not like, you know, every restaurant don't make good brisket, man. You know what I'm saying? Once you have brisket at the crib or at a barbecue or something, 
the restaurants be fucking up brisket sometimes. The restaurants be fucking up royally. Let me see here, y'all. For get out of here and go check on this work. See what these guys are doing downstairs. <clears throat> but salute to y'all for joining me, man. I'm going to uh, catch y'all on Trio. Um, 78 Sports TV, salute to the mighty LDBC. Much love to the chat. Super chat, anybody came through showing love today. I'm about out of here. Deuces.